Writer Ministries, a ministry of helps, healing, evangelism, love, prayer, salvation. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. And here we are again in prosperity. How many are getting excited? Amen. We're in our last two hours. Amen. Prosperity is awesome. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries Bible School. Yes! <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We're in session number seven, and we're going to get started. Let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. Father, we just thank you for this awesome teaching. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here to help us and give us illumination, revelation, and comparison in the Word of God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're the head, we're the body, and we're excited to hear what you have for the church today in teaching us on prosperity, the keys to effective giving. And all the people of God said, amen. Yes, and amen. So the title is Keys to Effective Giving in Jesus' Name. In 1 Corinthians, let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3. Uh, scripture says, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity or love, it profiteth me, what? Nothing. Profiting. And what we're looking at here. And the scripture is very explicit and so what I want to talk about is giving out of love. Amen? Amen? And so, not a present need. When you give out of love, you're not doing it out of because I have a present need. The motive is, cru is crucial. Why are you giving? Amen? Faith works by love. Everybody knows that. So love is a force that goes beyond a present barrier, and it fuels my actions. Amen? Amen. If we love God, and therefore, when our tithes and offerings are given, we profit. Otherwise, we do not profit. And as you see in the scripture, it profiteth me nothing. How many want to profit? Amen. Amen. Okay. So when you love God, you do it with a loving get giving. Amen. So your attitude is give out of love. Amen. Now, I'm giving you keys to effective giving. So in other words, the prayers of a such and such person might affect somebody. Is that how that scripture goes? I don't think so. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So you want the effect of that prayer to function, and you want it to work. So if you want your giving to work, you have to do it effectively. Amen? And that's the time to say amen. 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 So when you say amen to me, that's telling me you're understanding, okay? Praise the Lord. So otherwise, you're not going to profit, and I want you all to profit. So the biggest thing is giving out of love. Not because someone said, if you don't give your tithes, blah, blah, blah. That's not how you do it. You do it because you want to, amen? amen? And when you do it properly, God wants to reward you. So praise the Lord. Exodus 35. Is, uh, we're going to flip back and forth. You're going to get your Bibles all trained up, ready to go. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Exodus chapter 35. And we're going to read in verse 4 and 5. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it. An offering of the Lord, gold, silver, and brass. So the objectively here is we want to give personally to Jesus. Amen? Amen? He gave his life for ours so we could go to heaven. But there's so much more in, into that. So he's the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right. So bring an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart. Would you say willing heart has to do by giving out of love? Yeah. So when you do that, it's going to make a change. I'm giving you this Christmas gift because I have to. 
How does that make you feel, the little guy who's receiving it? Well, okay, I guess you're fine. You know, I'll take it. But there's no joy in it. There's no love. I'm, I want to give you this because I want to give it. I, I just want to see you so happy. And you're going to receive it with joy. Amen. So you got to look at how does Jesus receive in your gift. So when you bring an offering into the Lord, do it with love. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3. Praise be to God in Jesus' name. When we give, and these are all systematically things I'm sharing with the keys to effective giving. You want to give systematically. Think of yourself as I have a system on how I bring it. And I'm consistent in my systematically giving. Amen. That was, yeah. Yeah, 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 praise God. Chapter 3, let's look in verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Everybody knows that's a word picture telling you you're going to be loaded. Amen. Amen. Because you are honoring God with your first fruits, you're honoring Him with all of your increase in Jesus' name. Amen. So would you call that systematically because you're doing it with the first fruits? Say thank you, Jesus. Amen. 1 Corinthians 16. And as we learn to, pro to do what it says here, you will prosper. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 16, we want to look at verse 2. Upon the first day of the week, everybody say Sunday, Sunday. is the first day of the week. Let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him that there be no gatherings when I come. In other words, you should have your first fruits, your tithe, your offerings prepared on the day that you show up for church. That's what it's telling you. Are you giving it systematically? The first day of the week, amen? Now, some of you get paid and you want to bring stuff in on Wednesdays. That's great. Thursday night prayer night on internet, prayer, you can give there too. There's all kinds of ways because you cannot outgive God, amen? The more you give, the more blessing you're going to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Malachi chapter 3. How about you know where we're going there? Praise God. When you give, give proportionately. Amen. Malachi 3.10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Amen. So you're bringing in your tithe, and everybody say one-tenth is proportionately. So you're bringing only one-tenth out of 100% that you're bringing in. So you live on 90, God likes the 10. Amen. Praise God. How many know that God doesn't need your money? You need it. Amen? Amen. You need it to give so God can bless. God's teaching us to be givers. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Thank you, Jesus. And if you start grasping onto these keys, keys unlock things, praise God in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Praise God in Jesus' name. I can remember a story told to me by Kenneth Copeland when he was first into the ministry, and he realized after being with um, Dr. Um, Oral Roberts at some of his ministries that he should be giving money. But he didn't have much. Anybody know what we're talking about? Silver and gold have I none? <laughs> he's broke. So he's sitting in there and, and the offering plate's coming and the only thing he had to give was a pencil. I mean, you know, that's not a, quite what everybody gives. Most people give money. But that's all he had. You know, because when you fly airplanes, you have pencils with it, so you're writing them for me. And he had this little bit of pencil, and he said, Well, Lord, if I had money, I'd be glad to give it to you, but that's all I have. But I want to give this to you because I'm giving. So I put an envelope, licked it, stuck the envelope. And he was one of the last guys to stick an envelope. About the time he's sticking in there, some guy in the back room says, Kenneth, come here. He goes, what? Come here. So he runs over and says, what do you want? 
here's 10 bucks I owed you. And he goes, hey, hey, hold on a minute. Give me that, that offering bag. He grabs his pencil out of there and slips his 10 bucks in there and happy as a clam. He goes home and says, Gloria, guess what God did? He gave me 10 bucks. She says, yeah, really? Where, where is it? I'll put an offering. <laughs> but you got to realize, she realized what he had done and they got prospered because of what he did. Amen. But your first thoughts, your mental thoughts go to you like, I don't want to give that offering. We're going to save that. But you're not giving an honor to the Lord. Amen. Because we all think thoughts like that, you know. As though if I had it, would I give it? And he was put to the test. See, he said that. God made sure he got the money. He's checking him out. And well, he did what he said in his heart. I would give it. And God see, checked his heart out. See, God will check you out. Don't sit there and think that God won't. He may not check you out as quick as he did with him, but he's going to check you out. So if you say, Lord, if I had the money, Lord, I'd bring it in. And he'll say, well... When you get home and you go, yeah, there, oh, look, there's a couple of dollars. Like, I can go buy me a lottery ticket. I can buy a loaf of bread. I can get some milk. But that ain't what you told God. See, you got to start. Th He's the one who shows where the money is. You got to start thinking now. Did I say that to the Lord? I better start thinking systematically and proportionately. Amen. Praise God. So when you do it, i got news for you. We all go through this prosperity teaching and you go, man, if money doesn't fall out of heaven. How come? How do I get it? God brings it to you because you're a giver. The way you get out is God's way, and that's the only way. If you try to do it the, the way of the world, I mean, everybody knows you don't have to pay anything till next month. Actually, if you buy our furniture, we can make the payments for eight months away. And I say to myself, they hook in you by telling you that you can make small payments. That's expensive furniture. <laughs> You know, why don't you just hold on to your money? You can pay for it. Amen. But everybody wants to have it now attitude, and that's the way of the world, and we're not of the world. We're in it. Yeah. We have to go by God's way of getting it. Amen? Amen. And it works the best. Proverbs chapter 11, preach, please. Praise God in Jesus' name. And those of you that learn quickly will receive quickly. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And if it takes a while and you fudge here, fudge there, and you do real good over here, and the next day you fudge here, you're just going to shortchange yourself. Been there, done that. How many know it doesn't work like you want it to work? If you do it the way God says to do it. Amen. Does everybody know 2 plus 2 is 7, right? I'll have my own way of adding. So when I read a ruler, I get 7, don't you? 2 inches plus 2 inches, 7 inches. So I'm going to cut the line right here. How many know that it doesn't work that way, does it? So if God says do something, what do you think he's telling you? Two plus two is what? Hey, you got it. Four. Praise God. We got anointing over here. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So when we do it God's way, you're going to come out ahead. Who do you think is speaking to you when you hear inside yourself, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I'll, I'll send it in the mail. I didn't bring with me today. People say that to me all the time, and I know what goes on in their head. They ain't bringing it. Most people don't say what, don't do what they say. But God said, therefore he did it. Amen? So if he says, this word is what God says. And when you start believing what God's word says, you will get it. I mean, we taught you how to heal the sick. Man, you grow out arms, legs, and do the neck thing. People falling under the power of God. That's God's word is working. There's no difference between that and, he, and healing the sick and getting money. It's all the same God. Amen? Amen. Aren't you glad? We got four to say to Aren't you glad? Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24. How many are there already? There is that scattereth and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Amen. Amen. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him. But blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. Interesting word pictures. So you've got to start, okay. There is that scattereth and yet increaseth. You start finding out that you can be blessed by giving more in just one place. Amen. Praise God. 
And then there are those guys withhold. They say, oh, I won't, I've got a hundred dollars. So I'm supposed to bring in 10. I'll bring in five. Because I've got to go out to eat after church with the rest of the group. Well, that's going to lend to poverty. You're not doing it right. See, most people think, well, I have to work to get my money. You never forgot. You've been missing the point. God is my source, not the job. Amen? Look, I was going to tell you straight out, and everybody's going to hear it on video and on tape and everything else. You're not supporting me. Because if you were, I'd be broke. This church doesn't bring enough money in to keep the place alive. Come on. If you were on my side of the coin, you get 30 bucks a week. You kind of like, how do you make the telephone bill? It costs 100. How does, how does the Lord keep the doors open every month? We've been here 10 years. Because it's God is at work. It's God is bringing in prosperity. It's God is helping us out. It's not you. So don't think you're supporting pastor. I have to operate by faith just like you. I need to bring in my tithes. I need to bring in an offering. And I need to believe God for the increase, don't you? Amen. Hello? I'm just like you, anybody else? But I, when you understand the faith and how it functions and what it does for you, you'll get it. Now, I was telling Ron earlier before we started meeting, you know, I'm going to fly that airplane this Thursday again. It's $100 an hour. Say so $100 one hour. So an hour and a half is 150 bucks. Two hours is 200. Well, how do you get the money to go do that? Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. See, so, you know, I think I made seven thousand dollars total gross income last year from the church. So how did I survive? And I've got a lot more. It's God. See, you got to look at it straight out. It's the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? Praise be to God. So if you don't have this understanding and you don't function in it, you ain't going to get it. It's just as plain as day. So God wants us to have, that's why we're giving this teaching. All the stuff you guys are getting, I know how to do it. That's why I'm doing it. And I, I've learned a long time ago, if you can't do it, don't teach it. Say amen. amen. So how many want to be the liberal soul? <clears throat> liberal, man, giving out all types of things. It is so easy. Now I give it to you, man. You were mean to me. God, while we were yet sinners, gave us Christ. We can't be thinking like that. There's no love in that, is there? Remember the first give out of love. You don't deserve it. There's no way in the world I'm going to give it to you because you don't deserve it. But because I love God and I have mercy, sure, I'll give it to you. And don't expect for you to pay it back. How many times do people ask for money from me? And so oh, I'll pay you back. Just don't even think about it because it won't happen. So I'm not interested in you paying it back. I'm just going to give it to you. That's the best way to go. There's no strings attached. And you know, when you do that, God knows that you're giving to Him, and He makes sure that you get returned. Amen? God's prosperity plan is a whole lot better than the world's plan. Amen? Amen! Amen. I'm the only one saying it with enthusiasm. Amen. Praise God and Jesus. All right, Exodus 35. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You see, when you have an experience... And then you have several more of similar things. You realize how powerful God is. And when he says he is, and he's full of love, and you start doing it like God tells us to do it, man, what a change. Say, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, but all my bills are paid. Yeah. In this church, there's nothing, one thing in here that we all want except the normal daily living things. So everything's paid for. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We're reading in Ma uh, uh, Exodus chapter 35, and I'm going to be in verse 21. Now, before I read the verse, I want to give you this word. We talked about sowing. I needed to go back one where I was in Proverbs, the person who sowed. The objective, it said, the liberal sow, sell, and, if, and then he sells it. So I wrote over here, if you do not sow, then sell it. In other words, if you have a product and it can bring you money, but you're sitting on it, you're not doing anything, and you're not bringing in a tithe because you say you don't have any money, find out what you can sell so you can turn it into cash to give to the Lord. And because you have the heart for the Lord, because you want to bring in a tithe, you want to bring in a gift, you want it. See, I learned a long time ago, 
and some of you remember this when I first opened the church here, is the fact that don't come to church empty-handed. I mean, a lot of you have children and raised and stuff. When they were little kids, you made sure they had 10 cents, 20 cents, buck, whatever, in their hands so they could give. They didn't have any idea why you were doing it. You never give me any money at the other time. But anyway, uh, you're teaching them to be a giver. So don't go to a church, don't go to a meeting empty-handed. So how you can do this? Well, you know you're going to do something. You made a decision. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you sell something. Say amen. amen. Because that's how you can create cash. You go in your garage, man, it's full of stuff. What can you sell? It's somebody else's treasure to you. It's your junk. But you can turn it. So don't sit there and, with, and hold on to stuff. Amen? All right. Now we're back to Exodus 35. Give willingly with a purposeful action. Okay? The reason I made this piano is the purpose so you could have music. That was the purpose of creating. The reason, the purpose, why we built a car so you could drive it and get to church on time. Get me to the church on time. Amen. Good song. Praise God. The objective is you have a purpose for why are you giving. Okay? I want to honor God. Let's see what God said in verse 21. And they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whom his spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and for all his service and for the holy garments. So we know that God stirred up the hearts of people to come and do something willingly. Haven't you ever known people who can do things for you, but they do it willingly and not begrudgingly? And when they do it, that makes you feel so good that they helped you out. Huh? Haven't you done that? It's a, it's, a, it's a neat feeling when people do that. Okay, now in verse 29, same chapter, 35. The children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord. Every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all manner of work, which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. So, you may not have the money, but have you ever considered in saying to the Lord, God, I really want to bring all my tithes in and all the stuff, and there's some areas in my life I'm not in that position yet. So, can I tithe my time to the church? Can I come in here and clean the church? Can I do something for the Lord? What can I do, Lord, to get myself in a position so I can learn to start giving? And when you have that willing full heart, God just opens the door for you. And whatever it is that you want to do, it's just the easiest pie. That's because God makes it to happen. And when you have the heart for the Lord to do certain things like that, man, it's just the easiest pie. Now, I can remember when I worked for KCCS radio station, Christian radio station, and I had in my heart, it just entered in my heart, you know, I could probably make one of these throwaway newspapers that would have advertisements in it, because I knew advertisers, that's my job, I could go out and get advertisers, and I could make a newspaper and make some bigger money than what I'm doing now. And, and then I had this thought, well, all these guys that are on the radios that like to preach, I bet they have writers that would write up a story and I could put that in the paper, and it would make it interesting to read besides all the sales and stuff and hire a reporter and do some fun things of so what's going on in calendars. I had that come into my heart. I could do this, maybe a five or six page paper. And so at that time, computers weren't like they are today. They're all DOS and wasn't easy to work with. And so in order to get pictures in the newspaper, you have to get a photographer and turn it into a screened effect so they could put it on there and, and put a print on it and then run it through their machine and stuff. I went and talked to printers if they would set it up for me get all the, all the typing corrected back then. It was all hand printed and pasted and put together to make a steel. And then I went and talked to the guy that's going to run it through the Eagle Web Press and, and then put it into a newspaper. And I found out all these guys just opened the door. They didn't know me from Adam, just walked in, took me behind the scenes, showed me what I had it in my heart, what they were showing me, and that they could do all this. And I said, well, here's what my plan is. I want to do this and this and this. 
would I be able to pay you on a month-to-month basis? Oh, yeah. We would do that for you. And so I went out to the talk to the, week, the Eagle Web Press place, and he's huge, giant, you know, newspaper printing press, but for smaller guys. And would you be able to do this on a monthly basis so I could get all my stuff, bring the income in, and pay you guys? He says, yeah, how many else do you want to make? And we had it all figured out, all on paper. And I walked out, and I said, okay, God, I got all this information. I mean, I needed a salesperson. All the stuff that I needed to start a business just came right in front of me. And I, and I said, I got all this stuff. Now what do you want me to do with this, Lord? He said, I just wanted to show you how easy it is. No, you're not going to do it. Two weeks later, somebody else did exactly the same thing I had in my heart and got it started. But it shows me how God can get things to work for you when you're doing it for him. And it's not a hard thing. It's an easy thing. Can you, can you grasp what I'm saying? So with a willing, full, purposeful action, wow, that would suffice my income that I needed to make. I know I could do this. There's people out there. You know, and that is called Christian News Northwest is the paper that took over what I was going to start. So I thought, thank you, Jesus. And I knew in my heart that I wasn't to do it after I got it all done. Now I know why. Because it's for somebody else. Because God had another plan for me. He's just showing you how simple this. is. So when you start giving willingly and start doing things, God just opens the door. You can't make it any easier. Amen. Isaiah. 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 Chapter 1. Do you like it if I say it with that British accent or do I just say it the way I normally say it? Okay, we'll do it normally. Amen. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. How many are in verse 19? How many people here can say, I'm a verse 19 person? If you be willing and obedient, I'm here, a willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Amen. Isn't that good news? So in my key to success for effective giving, I want to give obediently. Amen. Amen. See, so if I give obediently, God, God will reward you for your obedience. So Miriam teaches, and that's my wife, that you are to pray and ask the Lord how much do you are to give. Most people come in here with a preconceived idea. I want to bring in five bucks. I want to bring in ten. Oh, I might stretch to fifteen or twenty. But you haven't sat down and said, Lord, I know my tithe is this much, but how much do you want me to bring in? Amen. And if you start on that process, you'll find out God's usually right on the money or a little more. But he's never going to ask you more than you can give. He's text testing you to see if you're willing and then obedient. How many understand there's two things? We've got to be willing first and then obedient. Come on. The obedient part is the hardest part because, yeah, I want to do it, but I'm going to do this right now. I'll do it tomorrow. How many of you ever heard that thought come in your head? That ain't God talking to you. It's the devil lying to you to tell you to do it tomorrow when you need to do it today. Amen? Amen. Amen. So do it obediently. And then if you do it, you will eat the fat of the land, which means the doors open for you. Whatever it is you have need of, the things you have promised you will happen. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Thank you, Jesus. I hope you guys are grasping onto this information. It's, it is good information. I've, I've watched it work, and if you grasp it and you operate by faith, it'll work for you too. Amen? Yeah. All right. Give purposely from your heart. Amen. But also be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and that's the asking part. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Every man according as he purposes in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a what? Cheerful giver. Amen. So I'm going to brag on Sarah a little bit. She's back here running the video part for us. Praise Jesus. But here she is, been very obedient. And I can remember when she just was out of high school, just, just before high school. Miriam and I looked at each other and we knew that we were going to test Sarah financially. And Miriam says, oh, here's Sarah, here's five bucks, put in the offering. Well, 
we watched her put it in her purse and it didn't come in the offering. I'm bragging on Sarah here. And so how many know when you're a kid, oh, for money, I got something to do. You know, she wasn't obedient. So the next time we had church, we said, Sarah, can we have a little talk with you? We gave you money to put in the offering, but you didn't do it. You stuck it in your purse and you did whatever you wanted with it. Yeah. And it says, had you put it in the offering, we'd have gave you 20 bucks for yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, a couple weeks go by, and Mary goes, Oh, here's Sarah, here's a couple of bucks, put that in the offering. Bam! Man, it's, it's like her, she put that in the offering and said, Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. And uh, she got a new Easter outfit, you know. God just blessed her royally, gave her earrings, gave her whatever she wanted. That girl got blessed, man, because she was being a what? Obedient. So, the blessing part is she learned from that. Pro, that time on to give. She's not working full time and she's going to school. She's going to high school. She's going to work for me, work, come down here, puts in time, doesn't get paid for it, just does constantly. You know what? This girl's offerings for the year, I'm not telling you how much it is, has been more than the married folks that give in this church. Over a year's period, she's a little bit higher than most. And where'd the money come from? God's blessing this girl, saying in Jesus' name. So I just throw that out. Be what? Sensitive to the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. So in the way that we tested her, she says, I know God tests me on a lot more things in that. So she had learned from that. And because of that, she's now being more blessed than ever. In Jesus' name, amen. And so she's got this project. And I've been working with her on it for several years. That every year she goes and does the video of the graduations kids at her her high school where she used to go and so I prompted her to get the information out to do the next year's graduation for this coming year in advance of three to four weeks so she's out several months and she's already got a sale some parents got a flyer already and said well we better sign up and send her the money so what Sarah do on Sunday? She brings all of that cash that she got and she put it in the offering. Giving the first fruits to the Lord. Not spending it where she has needs and things. She gives it to the Lord. And do you think God's going to bless her? Yeah. Do you think she's going to get a lot of sales? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Jesus' name. So I'm sharing with you, she's learning from me and being obedient to the things I teach her and God's blessing her. Can he do that for anybody else? Amen. That wasn't loud enough. Amen. Still wasn't loud enough. Amen. All right, we got the guy in front row to say something. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When you really put it to work, say thank you, Jesus. That is faith. God said, do what he says, you will succeed. Amen. So I just wanted to brag on it. Praise God in Jesus' name. Now, as we said in here, every man according as he purposes in his heart. So she purposed in her heart to give. She wasn't grudgingly, wasn't of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver, and she did it cheerfully. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right? So, give how? Wisely and responsible. Give where you are fed. How many know this is where you're being fed? Amen. The tithes go to the local church. Amen. So, if you're going to a ministry and that's not your church, that's not where your tithe goes, unless you're being fed there and that's where you want it to go. It's up to you and God, of course. Amen. But give or sow in proportion to how much you want to be blessed. Did you hear what I said? I want to have $30 million, and then I better give more than three bucks. All right? So, I have to sow in Jesus' name. Amen. So I remember Charles and Francis Hunter, teachers of mine in Jesus' name, when their daughter, Joan, was a young girl in high school, the dad, uh, Ch Charles, used to give her an allowance. And so he'd give her so much a month. And so he would put in her checking account, because he used to be an accountant, so he knows how her money goes. And so well, she got her allowance on the first of the month, and about 10 days later, she says, Dad, can I have some more money? He says, well, I just gave you money a week, 10 days ago. Where'd you spend it all? Give me your checkbook. So he, go, he goes to the checkbook, such and such church, such and such church. Such and, you give all your money to churches. He says, well, yeah, that's what you taught me, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so could he say no? 
so he gave her more. Amen. And what do you think be, if it was your kid asking for more money? You said, where did it go? And you find out she'd been giving it. Amen. Different ministers and preachers and stuff. So think about giving well, how much you want to sow is proportionately how much you want to be blessed. Amen. So now Joan is now running a ministry for her mom and dad and going all over the world preaching the gospel. Amen. So do you think that all the money that comes in on the ministry that she's giving? Of course, in Jesus name. Amen. Also, we want to talk about give where there is a true need. Amen. The question is, is the need real? And did the money get there? How many have ever seen that quote unquote advertisement give to these kids whose bellies are all swelled up and they're living in a garbage pit? And is the need real and will the money get there? I mean, a lot of that money goes into all their hands other than where it's supposed to go. So, you know, pray, ask God, if I give such and such, will that get there? Amen. So you don't want to be tricked in throwing your money away because you think it's a good deal and they worked on your emotions and not on the spirit of it. Are you with me? Because there's a lot of people who will take offerings and, and ministries and work your emotions to give because we have this need, man. And, and if you don't give to us, we're not going to have that need met. It's not your responsibility to make that man's need met. It's God and him. Yes, there's needs. And it's good to have the body participate because it's a real thing. And I was at a meeting one time and this guy's house burned up and he had like four or five kids and he had no money and all the place broke down and the church brought up that we, and he was in the meeting and there was like two three hundred people and he says man this guy's house just burned up a few days let's pray and ask God to bless this man so the pastor prayed a measly little prayer and everybody goes amen thank you Jesus and some guy got up and says well that was a great prayer where's the money come on and they all sat, you prayed that one of God, well, you're it. So they passed the bag around. That's how the money got in a man's hand. I mean, sit there and pray about it and not do nothing. There's something wrong in the picture. Y'all follow? See, so is the need real? Well, it was real, but why didn't they do something about it? It just sat there. Had not that man got up, the person would have gone home poor and broke. No place to live. But when he was out of that meeting, he had over $1,000 sitting in those people's pockets. That was a need that was real, and God will bless you because you did something that was worthwhile doing it. It's a good investment to help others. The Lord says when you give to the poor, you give to him, and he'll repay you. Amen. So you got to understand the scriptures. Amen. All right, Malachi, we did that again. We're going to go over there once more time. And as you hear me, and I'll say to you, oh, yeah, I know that scripture. Don't ever do that. Say, oh, that's new scripture. What's, what's the revelation that I'm going to get from it now? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Whose house? God's house. Amen. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Amen. When you give, give expectantly. And expect the windows to open. Now, those of you that were in this church last Sunday when I was here, I said, you heard me. It's going to be sunshiny. It had been forecast to rain the day I preached, I said it, the next day, and today after that was supposed to, and it hasn't, but just a little tiny trace. And, but we've had more sunshine than we've had for a long time because I said, you know, I'm getting sick and tired of the rain. I want to fly my plane. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. We're going to have some nice sunshine. There's too many people walking around depressed. We've got to have some light on the subject. Did it happen? Yes, Did I expect the windows of heaven to pour me out a blessing? Yes. Have I received it? I'm getting it. Say, thank you, Jesus. It's mine and the sun shining. So what can you do be and expect it? As you see me, when I put in my tithe offering, I say what I want for it. And I thank God that I have the bills paid for. I thank God that I get to bless you, Lord. I thank you that this is my offering. I'm also putting that in. And this is what I'm expecting the windows of heaven to pour me out a blessing. Because this is the year of the blessing. Amen. 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 So, I give expectantly. I expect. <laughs> Can you just imagine me? Oh, Lord, I break up this bread and this fish. 
I know there's 7,000 out there. Maybe before the end of the month, we will have food. I know the rent's due in a week. What is that? That's not expectantly. He broke the bread, he broke the fish, and said, I'll go give it to him. I expect him to eat. And there was 12 baskets, 7 baskets left over. Left over, profiting. So when you pray, when you expect to receive, do you? I lay hands on you, I expect you to be well. Amen. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's a done deal. Uh, when I die, I expect to go to heaven. That's it. Don't you? So when you pray and you expect to receive, because I'm giving, I expect that to happen. Amen. Amen. So we also know how to do spiritual warfare, which we taught you already. You know, with a sow or so, they sow good seed, but there was tares among it. Amen. So you all remember that teaching. So you have to do a little bit on your part of insurance. Come on. I order stuff on the Internet all the time. Buy things on eBay, sell stuff on eBay. I buy something. I expect to receive it. Don't you? I get on there and they say, well, here's your, here's your code. It'll be done by UPS. It'll be there on Friday. It shows up on Friday. UPS driver knows, the internet knows too, so he better make sure it's here. Amen. But we in the world can go like that, but we can't put the expectation on God's Word. That's how I do it, and when I do it, I'm functioning in faith what God said you get to do, and since I get to do it, I do it, I get what I want. Gee, that sounds like Mark 11, 23. Cast that Word into the sea. Well, I believe in my heart. It's going to be done. Whatever I said, it shall happen. That's paraphrasing. Amen. I've done it enough times that I know God's there. Yes. Praise the Lord. I don't have to shake, shudder, and feel. And I just know it. Amen, don't you? Yes. So when you read this um, Malachi 3.10, bring you all the tithes, all right? I wrote this little here, and I wrote this little message, and it says, give simply. No strings attached. Well, if God doesn't bless me to forget this, that's string attached. That's not happy, carefully, cheerfully, is it? I give it because I want to, and I'm obedient. And I know God said he poured me out a blessing, so and I'm going to have all nations call me blessed. How about you? Amen. So how many know you've got lots of people in your life that are going to turn around and say, man, my grandson says to my, my, my wife, which is his grandma, you're loaded. You're rich. And he says that because she has things that he goes, how do you get this? She's like, hey, I give to God. God blesses me back. She's teaching him to figure it out. Say amen. amen. Okay, we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter, where are we going? Chapter 6. How many of you just love reading the Bible? Amen. Oh, man, we're in our daily Bible reading. I'm in Judges already. Hallelujah! Just in case you guys are knowing where I'm at. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we're in Deuteronomy chapter 6, and let's read verse 1. Now, these are the suggestions. Did I misquote Scripture? I'm sorry. These are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land whither you go to possess it, that you mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, all Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee, in the land that, thou, that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Amen. Amen. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, 
and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Make a couple more. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be, when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things which thou fillest not, and wells digged which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. I live in a house that I didn't build. I go to a store that has food that I didn't plant. Hmm, sounds like it's working for me today. Amen. Amen. So uh, I have to, and I get to, obey the commandments. Amen? Okay, praise God. So could you say, I give worshipfully out of these scriptures? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. You know, hear everybody quote these scriptures. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. They changed it and said one God. It's one Lord. So we want to we want to put this together and start thinking about how do you give worshipfully? Because you can you can stand up here and sing, and next thing you know, your tears are in your eyes, thoughts are going through your hearts, and you're really thinking about how much Jesus, how much you love Him, and you just begin to melt. Amen. Have you ever done that giving? Think about, these are keys to effective giving. Now, there was a man with leprosy in the book of Matthew, and I think it's in chapter 8, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and worshipped him. How do you worship somebody in a matter of moments? It's an attitude, isn't it? It's a look on your face, isn't it? And... How would Jesus know the look on his face and his attitude if the man's looking down, which most people do today instead of looking up? And if Jesus is standing and he's at his feet, Jesus is going to have to bend over and look down. If he's looking down, the guy's got to be looking up. So if he's looking up, how's he looking at him? So when we're looking up to the Lord, how are we looking at him? Or are you going, thank you, Jesus. So what is worship to you? So why don't you ask God how you should worship him and what he's looking for in the worship of attitude and expression from you. So when you give, do you give your money worshipfully and to the Lord? Let's give it another word. Are you giving your offerings in righteousness? This is Malachi 3 as well. So think about that in Jesus' name. Amen. We got one. Praise God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. God is so good. How many are enjoying your time today? And we're going to go to verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. See, he made that happen to me when I went out there and found this business that was just opened up. He's able to make all grace G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. He's making all grace abound toward you that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Man, that is a powerful statement. I'm so happy to hear that. So you want to sow into every good work. Now, you know, Pastor Dan from Kenya has been here, and he is a good work, and we've sowed into that. And it's a pleasure to sow into his ministry and watch God work in that man's life. I met that man when he was, uh, could hardly preach. But I knew in my heart, immediately, I sowed into him a VCR and how to heal sick tapes. And so when another friend of mine went over to Kenya, met him, because he didn't know him, walked into his place and saw my videotape running in that guy's house. He goes, oh man, you're all over Africa. <laughs> Because I sowed into his heart, into his good work. And so when you give, give it into a good work. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Genesis chapter 26. 
And this is an interesting statement in this chapter <clears throat> because when you think about it, can you do this? And I think when you do, and I believe God, that as you do, you're going to reap a lots of good things. Amen. In chapter 26, let's start in verse 1. And there was a famine in the land, beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of Philistines, unto Gear. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. There's famine. It isn't like you just go down to Albertsons and buy something from the store or Safeway. You have got to realize... So Mary and I went to, to South America, and we went up to, into the Andes, up in the high, high mountains. We're, we're up, I don't know, 7,000, 8,000 feet, and their mountain tops are still going higher. And there's this couple living in this little town. You know, the town's maybe like two or 300 people, and they have this little tiny house. And inside their little tiny house have one light bulb, one electric light bulb. The stove is put fire, wood, that heats up to iron so they can cook on it. That's not the best kind of electric stove you got, right? It's fire. And all the food that they're going to eat is what they grow outside on the land. And the eggs come from the chickens that they have. Milk comes from the goats they got. Honey comes from the beehive they got out backyard. You all follow what I'm saying? Now, if they don't have a crop, they don't eat. And any monies that's left over from the corn they sell pays for the electricity for the light bulb. Now, if you have a famine, tell me how you're going to do this. Got it? You got the picture. Okay, so now God says, don't go to Egypt. Stay right here where the famine is. Oh, now you're getting the picture. Okay, sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee, and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries... And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. That is a powerful statement. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. He's talking to Isaac. And will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Hey, I'm part of that blessing, aren't you? Wow, this blessing is still going on. Because that Abraham, here's the reason you're going to get blessed, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Isaac dwelt in Gaar, and the men of that place asked him of his wife, and he said, she is my sister, for he feared to say she's my wife, lest said he, the men of that place should kill me for Rebekah, because she was fair to look upon. And it came to pass, when he had been there a long time, that the Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety she is thy wife, and how saidest thou she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, lest I die for her. And Abimelech said, What is this thou hast done unto us? One of the people might lightly have lain with thy wife, and thou shouldest have brought guiltiness upon us. And Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He that touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Then Isaac sowed in that land, we're talking about famine, and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks, possessions of herds, and a great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. We're talking about can you sow when all hell's breaking loose, you are falling apart financially, nothing's working right for you, is the time to sow and sow bountifully, expecting to receive. Amen? Amen. So sow in your time of famine. Praise God in Jesus' name. I'm going to have to go a little bit faster. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Does this grab you anybody here? Praise God in Jesus' name. 
Thank you, Jesus. How many, how many got this? All right. We got to go where the T's are at, Robert. All right. First Timothy in chapter six, verse five. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Have you ever seen that bumper sticker? The more toys you have, you know, that's what it's saying here. But godliness with contentment is great gain. There's the answer, verse 6. But we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, o man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patient, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So the object here is money motives. The principle of money. Covetousness is your enemy in the area of money motives. Distribute means to share and communicate means to give. Amen. So what I'm going to do is end this session right now and then I'll pick it up on next session because I have too many scriptures for the amount of time I've got left. Amen. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this awesome teaching in the name of Jesus, keys to effective giving and we thank you Holy Spirit for giving us revelation, knowledge, illumination and comparison that we will do the commandments of God and prosper. And all the people of God said, Yes, and amen and amen.